Hello and welcome, I am your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to add tooltips to display the exact value of each data point. Let's begin. So I have my graph in here, it is showing some values and I have various buttons to modify the display. I can change the visual type between a bar chart or an line graph. I can modify how many entries are visible and I can convert the values that are shown. So as you can see in there, it is converting between dollars and euros. So now we're going to add a tooltip that will appear when we pass the mouse over a dot or a bar and display the value of that data point. So if I place the mouse in here, I want to see a tooltip around here saying about 41. Okay, so let's first go into the editor and create our tooltip game object. So let's go to our graph container and in here create an empty game object and let's call it tooltip. Inside let's create another empty game object, name it background and give it the image component. Okay. Then another game object and let's name this one text. Add the text component, set some text, the font size, let's say about 12. And now let's position everything anchored to the lower left position. So in here use shift. So we modify both the anchor and the pivot. So click in there and let's put them on four, four, set the width and height to zero and overflow on both of these and set it to align on the left side and down there. Okay. So this will represent our tooltip text. And for the background, let's also anchor it down in there. Okay. And now for the width and height, that will be dynamically modified based on the size of our text. So this is our tooltip game object set up. Now let's go into the code. So in here, the first thing we need is to grab a reference to our tooltip game object. So let's go in here and make a private game object for our tooltip game object. And we're going to grab it in here on our away equals the graph container dot find our tooltip game object. Okay. Now let's make two functions. So let me go down here and let's make a private void show tooltip. And then we're going to have a private void hide tooltip. On our hide, let's simply set the tooltip game object dot set active to false. And so it hides the game object. And now in our show, the first thing we're going to do is enable the game object. And as a parameter, we're going to receive a string for the tooltip text. And we're also going to receive a vector three for the anchored position. This is the position that we want to place our tooltip in. So now let's set the object text. So first go into the tooltip game object dot transform dot find we're going to find the text sub game object and get the text component inside it and set the text to our tooltip text so this way we are assigning our tooltip text to the text game object now that we have that we need to calculate the size of our background so let's calculate a vector 3 for the background size and now for this we're going to have a new vector 2 and for the width of our background, we're going to go into the text component and grab the preferred width. And for the height, we're going to have the preferred height. So this is the exact perfect size that would occupy by our text. Now we added a bit of padding when we set up our game object, as you can see in the editor. Our text game object is on 4.4 in order to give a little bit of space on the left side and under. So using that, let's make a float for the text padding size and set it to 4F, which is what we set up in there. And we're going to increase the background size on both the width and the height by the padding multiplied by 2F. So this way our background will have the text padding size of 4F on the left side, right up and down. Now let's just clean up this code in here by making a text so we don't have to do all of these finds. So the tooltip UI text, which is this and replace all of this. All right, so our code is nice and clean. Now after calculating the background size, let's go into the tooltip game object dot transform dot find. We need to find our background and then grab the get component of right transform and set the size delta to be the background size. 
Okay, so our show tone tip function should now be working. So let's go up here and just for testing, let's show a tone tip. So do show tone tip. Let's give it some text. This is a tone tip. And for the anchored position, just for testing, let's put it on 100, 100. Okay. So again, here first, we set the main game object to true so that it is visible. We grab a reference to the child text game object. We set the text to our tone tip text that we receive up here. We define a padding size, which is the same that we set up when we created the game object. We calculate the background size based on the width and height of our text. And then we simply apply that background size into our background rec transform. So let's see all of that in action. Yep, there it is. As you can see, the tone tip is correctly saying this is a tone tip and the background is correctly sized. Now, just for testing, let's make it say various things so we can make sure that the background is always being correctly calculated. So in here, very quickly, make a function periodic, which is part of the CodeMonkey utilities that you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And in here, I'm going to create an action and that action will be triggered every 100 milliseconds. And let's say something else. Yep, as you can see, regardless of what text we give the tooltip, the background size always fits whatever text is on there. Okay, now there's actually a slight issue in here, which you can see if I reduce the number of values. So there you go, and as you can see, the tooltip is behind the bars. Obviously, this is not what we want. Now, the reason it's behind is because the UI sorting order is based on the hierarchy, and since the bars were created after, they show up on top. You can see in here on the Editor, the tooltip is in here, and if I were to drag it all the way down there, you can see that it now shows up on top. So whenever we show the tooltip, we have to make sure we set it as the last sibling. So let's go back into our code, and on the show tooltip function, after we do all of this, then let's simply set the tooltip game object dot transform dot set as last sibling. This sorts it on the last position on the hierarchy. So now let's test. And if I reduce, yep, as you can see, it shows up on top of the bars. All right, so now that we have the basic tone tip working, let's apply it to show up whenever we set the mouse over a certain bar. Now in here, there are several ways that we can show our tone tip when we mouse over the bar. The simplest way we're going to do it is, first of all, we need to go down here and modify our graph visual to also send in the tone tip text. Then once we do that, in here, when we receive the tone tip text, we have to capture a mouse over on top of this game object and make it display that text on the tooltip, which also means that we need to go up here and make a static reference to show our tooltip. So let's do all of that one by one. So the first thing is to go in here onto the add graph visual, and we're also going to pass a string for the tooltip text. Now, obviously we need to rework all of these whenever we got the add graph visual need to add that down here, the same thing, add graph visual. And up here, we need to call this function using the tooltip text. So first, let's go up here, make a tooltip text. And now we're going to grab the tooltip text using the get axis label y, which will give us a visual representation of this value. And then let's pass in our tooltip text. Okay. So now all the way down here on the bar chart, in here we are creating a bar, so using this bar game object, let us simply add a component and I'm going to use the button UI, which again is also part of the CodeMonkey utilities. And this simply lets me easily access various pointer events. So I have a mouse over once funk, which triggers only once when the mouse passes over. And I'm going to add an action to that. And now in the action, it's in here that I need to do a show tooltip in order to show my tooltip text. But now I need a way to call this function. Again, there are many ways we can do that, but a simple one will be by making a public static void, show tooltip static, and it will simply call the same thing. So receive the same parameters. And then we have to go up here and make a static instance. So a private static window graph for our instance and set the instance on our await. So now using that instance, we can go into this static 
and call the show tooltip function and give it these parameters. Okay, so essentially we just created a static function, so we don't need an instance reference inside of our graph visuals. So in here, instead of using show tooltip, I'm going to use show tooltip static since that no longer requires a reference to our window graph. And with that, we now should have tooltip text being shown on graph position whenever we pass the mouse over this bar. And up here, the one thing we didn't set was the anchored position. So for that, we simply take the tooltip game object and get the rect transform component and set the anchored position to this anchored position. All right, let's test. Okay, here I am, and if I pass the mouse over, yep, there you go, there's the tooltip saying that this bar represents a value of 98. And if I mouse over this one, yep, 56, and move over various, and as you can see, we now have tooltips displaying the exact value that each bar represents. Now let's just make sure our tooltip disappears when we move the mouse away. So for that, we simply go up here and use another function inside the button UI. We also have to make a static for the high tooltip, so let's do that. All right, so we have a high tooltip static function which calls this one on the instance. And down here, we add a button UI to our bar game object, then on mouse over, we show the tooltip, and on mouse out, we hide the tooltip. And here, if I mouse over, yep, it says 98, and if I mouse out, it no longer says anything. Okay, great. Now let's just apply this to our line graph. So on our line graph, we're going to do very much the same thing that we did in here. So let's go down into our line graph visual onto the add graph visual. And here we have our dot game object being created. So we're going to do the same thing, but for our dot game object. So in here, let's call it dot button UI, and we're going to add it to the dot game object and everything else should be the same. Here's the graph, switch into a line graph. And now if I mouse over, and yep, you can see the tooltip that shows the value which is represented in this data point. So in there, in here we have a 30, and as you can see, it is 30, and there you got a five, and it is a five. So there you have it. We added some tooltips to our graph to be able to view the exact value of each data point. In the next video, we're going to create a graph visual object interface so we can later update our graph in real time. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from intcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.